This video is about giant creatures in our oceans, like real ones. But first, our planet is amazing. This sphere of life is so rich in diversity and unique creatures and other life forms. There is so much to explore, and humans do love to explore. Humans have been on pretty well all the large land masses for many thousands of years. During the 15th, 16th and 17th centuries, folks from all over Europe saw their mission to travel the world, complete the map, see what was there, explore. And while I think the exploration is excellent, I don't want to romanticise it too much because of the colonisation that happened as a result of the age of exploration was generally pretty bad for the folks who were being colonised, but I digress. Once the maps had been drawn, international trade routes connected and folks moving all around the earth, there was very little to explore. Well, very few habitable places left to explore. There were the extremes. Some places on earth are very cold and generally very dangerous. The poles of the earth were such places very cold, very remote, very hard to get to, and very dangerous. Even to this day, they are still difficult. Numerous explorers lost their lives or were forced to turn around trying to reach the North and South Poles. The North Pole was probably first reached by Robert Perry and his team in 1909. The South Pole was reached a few years later by Ronald Amundsen, who was a Norwegian explorer, and his team they beat Captain Robert Falcon Scott, who made several attempts in years prior, who was beaten by around a month and who perished on the return journey. A tragic tale, but that is the nature of the extremes of our planet. With the poles visited, humanity would turn to more extreme, unexplored places, namely mountains. Our tallest being Mount Everest, which remained unclimbed until the New Zealand mountaineer Edmund Hillary and his companion, the Nepali Indian mountaineer Tenzing Norgay, reached the tallest place on earth on the 29th of May, 1953. Humans had pretty well been everywhere, almost. The surface of our planet is something like 70% water. We call it Earth, but that's not really accurate by how much of our planet is covered in water. It's massive. Humans have been using ships to traverse the oceans for hundreds of years, but we'd never gone very far below the surface. It was hard to really know just what was down there. The terrain, the life, it was all quite unknown. A new frontier of exploration. This enormous unexplored domain that takes up most of the earth and even to this day is largely unexplored. Ever since sailors started heading out into the oceans, there have been tales of sea monsters, giant creatures that were spotted and sometimes even attacked ships, dragging sailors down to unknowable depths. Various cultures from around the world have giant ocean creatures in their folklore and legends. The Kraken being one of the most famous ones was from Norse mythology. A giant squid-like creature with gargantuan tentacles capable of bringing ships down, which has made its way into contemporary pop culture, such as in Clash of the Titans, Pirates of the Caribbean, and possibly most famously, Disney's straight-to-home movie from 2003, Atlantis Milo's Return. But there are other sea monsters from antiquity, Cetus from Greek mythology, sea serpents or serpent-like creatures from various cultures, and the Leviathan, as noted in the Bible. I don't exactly know what it is, but people certainly have a thing for big things in the ocean. A game that I thoroughly enjoyed and was properly terrified with at times is Subnautica, and to a lesser extent its sequel, Subnautica Below Zero, where there are humongous creatures in the depths of impossible sizes. They might be out there at any time to make you look into the depths and wonder what could be out there. There's something really fascinating about big creatures in the depths, and we haven't done a lot of exploration of the depths. The question of what is out there is, 
I think, a driving force of curiosity. In the first half of the 20th century, humans spent time exploring some of the most extreme places on the surface of the planet. The second half had two major other feats of human ingenuity and exploration. People going where nobody has gone before, thanks to some extremely brave people driven to explore and a lot of very clever people working on the vehicles they used to travel to the most extreme places people have ever been to. And back again. When I talk about humans visiting the furthest, hardest to reach places, you probably think of the moon landing and, well, you'd be right. What an achievement when in 1969 Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walked on the moon. But there was another feat of exploration not 10 years earlier, which I think is probably not as interesting or epic, but is still amazing for people to do. On the 23rd of January 1960, humans made it to the deepest part of the ocean, Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench. This is an extreme place to visit. The world was reminded of the perils that came with deep sea exploration in 2023 with the Titan submersible being lost as it attempted to explore the wreck of the Titanic. About four kilometers below sea level, the deeper you go, the higher the pressure becomes, which means the more dangerous the vacuum of space with its total lack of pressure is extremely dangerous, but the pressure at depth, ignoring oxygen toxicity that can occur when diving deeper than the shallows and other weird things that our bodies do, our bodies simply aren't built to go down into the deep sea. The deepest recorded dive is 332.25 meters, set by deep sea diver Ahmed Gaber, which is an extraordinary feat in and of itself and required extraordinary amounts of training and acclimatization. If you or I went anywhere near those depths, we'd be in serious trouble. <laughs> At depths like that, our lungs don't really work as the weight of all the water above becomes too great to move. We'd also not be able to see at those depths because visible light doesn't reach beyond 200 meters down. The deeper you go, the higher the pressure. Too much deeper and your body would simply be crushed. Go deep enough, and if your submersible springs a leak, it would be over for you before you could realize what had happened. And there would not be much left of you for any potential rescue teams to uncover. This is why deep sea exploration is more often than not done by robots. Nevertheless, in 1960, two men went down to the bottom of the deepest part of the ocean. Jacques Picard, a Swiss engineer, and Don Walsh, a US Navy lieutenant, went down to Challenger Deep in their Bathyscaphe, which is a specialized deep, deep sea submersible. It was called the Triste. This was a profound engineering achievement. The pressure at Challenger Deep is over a thousand times the pressure we experience at sea level, the air around us, and is close to 6,000 pounds per square inch, which would be similar to a person holding something like 48 jumbo jets on their head. Extreme. When Picard and Walsh slowly made it to a, just above the trenches floor, they turned on the external lights and were able to see life. There were medusae, which are jellyfish-like creatures, and fish with their eyes on one side of their head. There was life down there, in a place absent of light, with extremely cold temperatures and extreme pressure. Incredible. Only 22 people have been to Challenger Deep, which is admittedly more than the 12 who have walked on the moon at the time this video is being published, but it's less than the almost 600 people who have been to space, which I think is incredible. We are able to do exploration with deep sea robots and we have discovered some really interesting things at the bottom of the ocean. At the start of this video, I hinted at giants in the ocean. I'm not talking about the Kraken or Leviathan or anything out of myths and legends. I'm talking about real animals known to science. We know that there are some very large animals in the ocean. In fact, the largest animals to have ever lived, the blue whale, live in the ocean. But they don't really travel much below 150 meters in their deepest dives. When we go down to the depths of the ocean, this is not just Mariana Trench depth, but in the deep ocean, hundreds of meters below the surface and deeper, 
there tends to be giant versions of animals that we would see in the shallows. Somehow, the depths provide a place for giant creatures to thrive. Let's talk about some examples. We have crabs around the shallows, sometimes burrowing into the sand at the beach. They're usually pretty small. Sometimes we'll find bigger ones, maybe the size of dinner plates. But if we go deeper, we might find the Japanese spider crab. These crabs tend to live between 150 and 600 meters below the surface. There's no light visible to our eyes for the most part, and it's very cold. Far deeper than any human body can go without being crushed. The Japanese spider crab can reach spans of almost four meters across and can weigh up to 20 kilograms, which for a crab is very large. You may be familiar with isopods. Pillbugs or slaters or woodlouse are examples of isopods, but they live on land, in the deep ocean. And here I'm talking up to 2,100 meters deep, we get giant isopods. On land, isopods generally grow to around two and a half centimeters long, but giant isopods in the deep sea can grow up to 40 centimeters long and weigh up to three and a half kilograms. That's a big bug. The most common species of squid is the European squid and can be found from the shallows down to about 500 meters. They range from 15 to 40 centimeters in length. But if we go deeper, much deeper, we get bigger squid. The giant squid found from 900 meters below the surface are huge. These are elusive creatures and we don't know much about them because up until recently, we'd never seen one alive in the wild. The biggest mantle recorded, that's the head looking part of the squid, was 2.25 meters long, its eyes being the size of dinner plates. When considering the tentacles, the longest squid measures about 13 meters in length. The giant squid aren't even the largest squids out there. We've measured colossal squid, an even larger species, with total lengths of 14 meters and weighing over 500 kilograms also living in the cold, deep parts of the ocean. We have worms in our gardens. There are worms everywhere. Most are extremely small, but not in the deep ocean. Between 1,000 and 2,400 meters live giant tube worms. These are really unusual creatures. They don't really have any predators, and scientists have estimated to have found individuals that are over 300 years old. Some estimates suggest that they could live to be over a thousand. These worms can get to 2.4 meters in length. That's a long worm. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail in this video, but there are giant one meter length spiders living in the deepest ocean around Antarctica. There you go. But why do things in the deep ocean get so big? Well, we have a couple of ideas. The first is Bergman's law. This states that sea animals tend to increase in body size with a decrease in temperature. Cold temperatures tend to lead to larger cells and lower metabolic rates. Metabolic rates is how much energy you need to keep your body doing its thing. Because light doesn't penetrate past the first few hundred meters, the deep sea tends to be very cold. Animals with larger bodies have a better time here because they have less surface area compared to their mass. It means they conserve heat using less energy, which is advantageous. Cold temperatures tend to produce big animals. This goes hand in hand with Kleber's rule, which states that animals that are larger will tend to be more efficient. They aren't losing as much energy to heat loss. Moving is more efficient if you're big. Eating is more efficient. Living is more efficient. In the deep ocean, it's important as there often isn't a lot of food down there. Animals may have to travel far distances between meals. It pays to be efficient, hence the size. And finally, there's the island rule. Animals on islands have a tendency to be larger than their small bodied counterparts on places that aren't islands. We think this might be due to the isolation. Isolation and limited resources mean that there's an evolutionary arms race to outcompete everything else when it comes to being a predator or being prey and getting enough to eat. The deep sea kind of functions like an island. It's remote, resources are scarce and the competition for resources and to survive is fierce. So animals tend to get bigger 
That's pretty cool. There are so many amazing animals and we keep finding more of them. Earlier this year, an expedition found a hundred new species of deep sea animal. Last year, 5,000 species were discovered. There's a whole world out there and we know so little about it and we keep finding new things. Who knows what else is out there? Are there even bigger things in the deep ocean? Sea monsters? Uh, probably not. There may be more big things out there, but probably nothing like the Megalodon, a giant prehistoric shark which was multiple times bigger than modern white sharks. It's fun to theorise and watch videos about unsolved mysteries of the deep, but it's pretty unlikely that there's some kind of gigantic predator that we haven't already stumbled upon. <laughs> Things in the deep ocean tend to get pretty big. I think that's pretty cool. The ocean is a domain fit for modern exploration. In a time when all of the maps have been filled in, it really is a frontier like none other, except maybe space, though the ocean has far more life as far as we know. Thanks for watching this video. I think the deep ocean is both frightening and very cool. There are lots of unknowns about it. We keep finding new things and there are giant creatures. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a like and drop a comment down below. I also invite you to subscribe to That's Pretty Cool for more videos where I explore topics that inspire in me a sense of curiosity and wonder. Thanks again for watching, take care, stay curious, and I'll see you next time.